So hello and welcome. Today we will make a conversation with communists from Poland who lived in Germany. Like me, I am emigrate. Uh, I emigrate to France, and Comrade Boisje lived in Germany near the border with with France. So maybe firstly, could Belgium. You... Belgium. Yes, Belgium. but Belgium is. Uh, it's not far from France. And uh, so firstly, could you present yourself and why you are emigrated, uh, when you are emigrated, what you are living in Germany? So, hello, everybody. I'm just uh, spending here uh, with BTS in Germany before I was as well living in uh, in Great Britain, but then I have a short episode back to Poland. Then I go to Germany. Uh, in Germany, I just follow my uh, my job. I just wanted to be shifted actually to Germany. Uh, somehow I like this country. I like it to live here and more, more or less it's... it's uh, now my my feeling to this country a bit changing um, during the last years but uh, before of course that way that way my accent is uh, so terrible because uh, yeah i'm i'm left london long long time ago and i have no natives around me and yeah i'm catching the chinese accent from my wife and and polish of course left and and the german accent so yeah, I'm i'm just moved here with the with the job and i'm staying in the same company for the Eight years already, and uh, recently applying for the German citizenship, just to be easier, because I have just bought a house and I have a uh, raising a, a small kid, so it's always easier to be a com uh, citizen of the country that I live. Okay, but why you are emigrated from Poland? Because Poland is presented in the Polish propaganda like a big success of the economic success uh, that because of the fall of the communism now poland is, is very rich country we have the the fastest growing economy in, in in europe so why people are not want to live in this in in this paradise uh paradise okay uh let me be so uh not not in the in the line of you but uh, i would say like that the, when i was immigrating the first time uh, to london it was year 2007 uh, that was the big uh, wave of immigration from poland then the second time i came to germany in 2012 as i said it would be almost nine years uh, and of course there was already eight years and then from my first immigration uh, more than more than uh, 12 years there is a big change in Poland, of course, still now from the time when I was immigrating. But at the time when I was moving from Poland, of course, our uh, earning and standard of life was uh, quite lower. And but but by me, it's a bit different because I'm uh, always have some likelihood, uh, some some feelings to that country. Some, somehow, I like the small German German towns and and the way of life here. For sure, the life here it's more uh, quiet than in uh, in Poland, <laughs> because as uh, as you know, uh, Polish capitalism uh, after 1989 it's it's this worst version from 19th century, uh, or this imported Anglo-Saxon or uh, American way of capitalism, uh, where everybody have to fight for everything, and yeah, of course here in the West when. Uh, uh, the rest of the social um, uh, social country uh, social government left because it's nothing comparable to the 80s uh, or 70s was but here of course it's, it's less and less uh, even during my stay here in the 10 years it's changed a lot it's it's less and less of the welfare state uh, but it's still my, uh, much much more uh, convenient and much more quiet life here than in in Poland mm -hmm. But other hand, what I uh, find out being in uh, Poland last uh, in this year, I, I finding out that in, in in Poland it's somehow easier uh, easier to reach very high level if you have contacts, if you have of course I'm born in the right family and so on. In in Germany, it's somehow concrete. Uh, if you're born in some class, then you stay in this class, and it's very very hard to jump between this. 
This is almost impossible. Hello. <laughs> You are finished. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm finished. So, I'm so, so, when you smoke cigarette, it's uh, it's a sign that you finish uh, talk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other and uh, as well, another thing about uh, Germany here. Uh, what many people are saying that in Poland the uh, difference of the wages is very high. Gini, uh, Gini confessed that in uh, in wages is is much higher than here in the West. That is true, but there is something like a distribution of the wealth, and distribution of the wealth is much, much unequal in Western Europe than in Eastern, and uh, that not many people realize this. Uh, than um, like Holland, like Germany, like Sweden have much more inequality in uh, wealth, not in the income, but in the wealth distribution. And uh, how many uh, Polish people lived in Germany? Uh, so long, if I remember, when I was immigrating, there was around one million eight hundred thousand. But I think it's the, the number is growing significant. Of course, there was a uh, few uh, few waves of immigration uh, to Germany uh, before Second World War. There was uh, quite a bit amount of the Polish living in Germany. Then eighties, of course. Uh, the Silesians come here, the uh, so-called in Germany. Uh, Spät at Siedler uh, means, uh, mm, how do I say it? Mm, like a refugee, the late, late, late commerce, something like that. Mm, there was the Silesians who can uh, prove that they had a German nationality somewhere in the past or signed the uh, German nationalists in the time of the war. There was the 80s, they come to here to the camps. And then, of course, after uh, Germany opened the uh, uh, work market to the Polish, what was in 2012 or 2011, something like that. Okay, but uh, um, do you do you know other Polish people who lived there? Because I was in a, in Halle. This is the uh, city in the east of Germany. My brother worked there. Now he worked in Frankfurt, uh, but uh, he he was living. Uh, he was working in the um, in the construction with uh, people only from Poland so all these people who, who worked there uh, it was the Polish Poli uh, Polish workers and they lived together also in this uh, big uh, big block uh, so when I was there uh, I was uh, I, I, I need people's uh, uh, Polish people's in in supermarket uh, in in park and I, I uh, it was very very funny that I am walking with my 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 brother with his uh, with his child and all the time somebody oh hi Florian oh hi hi how are you and uh, we were in but Germany but there's some difference now because you think about the eastern germany what is quite you know, close to poland and there is a lot of uh work is temporary work is coming then working i'm living on a completely opposite side of poland it's like a uh, eight seven eight hours driving from from polish border uh, here is a bit different structure of the people. Of course, in my agricultural area, there's a lot of um, Polish, but now replaced by uh, Romanians and Bulgarians who coming here for the agriculture industry, temporary workers. Uh, it's uh, less and less. It's of course it's temporary in the summer uh, coming. Before it was much more, and now it's less and less. And it's, as I said, replaced by Romanians and Bulgarians. But uh, there is as well a huge immigration, um, as I said, Silesians who they are speaking Polish, they are from Poland, but they don't recognize really as a Polish. They recognize like as Silesians and as a Germans, but less as a Polish. And I meet a lot of people like this. Mm. And there is a part of people who come here and they're making quite successful uh, life. I don't know, around me is a big, big, big uh, chicken farm uh, ruled by the Polish family, very, very successful. Uh, I know one woman from from City Woods, uh, quite old woman. She's working as a, a sworn interpreter. She was translating my uh, documents. Uh, she's one interpreter in the three languages: German, uh, Dutch, uh, French, and to Polish, of course. 
So, so, and she's uh, she playing on violin, I think, profession. She was a playing professional violin in, in which. So, there is more people like this as well here. So, Polish people is, is a lot, and like a two, three different words this temporary workers, um, the Silesians who came here and they don't feel so much Polish, uh, and this small part of Polish what's doing here. Mm, as I said, integrated as a normal life in here. Okay, so now we can talk about the politics. So when you were in uh, you were in Poland, you you were a journalist for the for the trade union newspapers. Is it right? Yes, even I, I wrote to the daily newspaper on the Tribuna, call a uh, short episode, maybe one year. Uh, yeah, and uh, mostly uh, cooperate with the trade unions in Poland. Somehow, tradition of my family, uh, this left side. As my mom, uh, my mom was in solidarity. What was the like? I'll say opposition to uh, to the communist government in Poland. But as she said, she quit it uh, just after everything finished because she said that this was uh, leftist movement, and they never fought for the capitalists, as she said. <clears throat> just somebody wrongly understand them and use them. My mother also was on in solidarity, and I think that uh, most of the uh, parents of our generation were in solidarity. So it was the massive movement. Uh, so now I would like to ask you about the flag which is behind you. Uh, it is the Deutsche Democratic Republic. It was the country created by the uh, by the comrade Stalin, I suppose. And what do you think about the DDR? Uh, that's maybe a subject for 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 the whole uh, for the whole podcast or something like that um, about why the DDR was, hmm, let's say, less less successful, less rich. Because of course the difference of the uh, life uh, in uh, in West and East was was quite different. Uh, in West in Western Germany of the times uh, when the DDR was existing was not a country like like now. It was much more social country and and somehow I can compete with the DDR. But the point is. The DDR, by the history and by circumstances, was created in the poorest place of uh, Germany. In the all history of Germany, the place of the DDR was existing. There was the agricultural area without uh, industry, strongly connected to the uh, industrial heart of Germany, what is here, uh, Ruhrgebiet. Uh, they was cut it off, and they have to start to building their own um, uh, their own nation from from scratch, having no industry, having only agriculture, and so on, so on. So. Mm, yeah, we mostly looking the reason why why was uh, the difference uh, in the uh, life level between these uh, two countries. Ah, from the uh, last days, I sent to you the photo from my my village. My village is uh, quite uh, different than there are villages in the Western Germany, because here very popular is the right wing, the, the all AfD and PD and so on, so on. This now Nazi parties. So here the Germans are very right uh, winged, but in my village, seeing somebody put this flag in his home, and it wasn't me. <laughs> so there is, I think, some some people who came from there to in here. Yeah, and in uh, in East there is a big nostalgia for the old time of the DDR because uh, what the Germans, mm, as they calling uh, unity. Recently there was a, a third of. October, the national holiday of Germany, the uh, day of unity of Germany, but when the Western Germany incorporated the uh, East, he, the official saying that was the join the two equal countries, but in fact, there was a colonize of the Western uh, corporation into the Eastern Germany. And in the fact, uh, they done exactly what they done in Poland. They came, uh, they bought the in industry, very few keep the rest shut down, and the most of people have to move uh, from Eastern Germany here to West just to keep some job. 
I don't know how it's now, but 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I was uh, sometimes traveling to the Eastern Germany, the place like a Frankfurt or the Gerlitz, Gerlitz really recommend for us. Touristic travel because it's a really beautiful baroque town, really beautiful baroque town. Uh, it's renovated now and really beautiful, but in the night when you walk in the center of Gerlitz, the 70% of the flats, it's dark because uh, they really lost like a 50% of the population. The same Frankfurt, Oda, and so on, the small cities in the East Germany, because the people are forced just to move to the West uh, because of the lack of the jobs and so on, so on. So, so on, finished the Eastern, Eastern Germany. Now they are recovering slowly, but uh, the difference between these two countries is it's, uh, quite seen. And because of the... Um, this collapse of the economy of the Eastern Germany after uniting the two parts of Germany and this all move of the people and unemployment and so on, everything what has happened during the, um, during the transformation. <clears throat> the political stances in uh, Eastern Germany are quite different than in Western Germany. But in e election, you can e uh, very easily see the borders of the two uh, former German states where uh, you can see the elections results in uh, in East. <clears throat> the political stances are very uh, radical. They are from the the most popular parties are they from uh, <clears throat> left is the Linke. The Linke is a uh, uh, former SAD, uh, means the um, the Communist Party of Germany in the time of the DDR, and from the right side is the neo-Nazi NPD. So. What is not happening here in the Eastern Germany when the people mostly voting for this uh, non-ideological uh, yeah, gray parties like SPD or CDU. What actually difference between them is nothing. I think that uh, for this incorporating the DDR part uh, Western Germany, we can use the very known German words uh, Anschluss. Uh, uh, Germans are so using uh, as an answers of, uh, <laughs> of this German. It is one of the few German words which I I knew from the from the childhood. Uh, so could you please uh, are so it is two question. Are you politically active today in the German political scene? And could you present the German left the leftist parties? Yeah, uh, the way you had it, you know. First of all, from two year, uh, three years, I am a father, and it is as you are as well, and you know how time is consuming. The other point is, uh, I am still not German citizen, so I'm not allowed to be a member of any party or any organization, and I'm not allowed to voting. So I am somehow active in the in the Polish scene. I, I try to keep it, but in Germany, it's hard for me um, because I am still uh, how you call Ausländer. Yeah? Uh, the alien. Even even in Germany, the um, in the department in um, in city hall for immigrants is called alien department. So yes, I am alien here. Uh, so way I, I have no, no much connection as well. Uh, I'm working in such company that we are quite international, and it's hard for me to catch to the German society. On the other hand, also the German society is very closed itself. Uh, they they are not like inclusive like I don't know British. <clears throat> they they mostly stay together in a, in a small context, but it's taking it's it's coming from the German history where they are always divided into very small communes and the communes keeping uh, each other together. So so they are close society. And the political scene of Germany. So the best, uh, there are two main parties, everybody know. There's uh, Chris, uh, Christian Democratic Union, uh, CDU, and Social Democratic Party of Germany, SPD. And uh, there are two parties where they changing the government, in the government. <clears throat> During their years, I think CDU, and name is the Christian Democrats, they are much longer in government than the SPD, but SPD as well had many councillors, uh, and sometimes they are in power. What the difference between them as a, um, a German uh, punk band, the uh, Tottenhausen described very good, is the choice between Pepsi and Coke. It have different name, but in the taste is a little bit different, but in the end of the day, it's the same thing. 
Uh, and sometimes even social democrats are more capitalistic than CDU, and CDU is uh, more socialistic in some aspects than uh, social democrats. Uh, the parties who are shaping the, um, the German politics are the small parties. Uh, that's FPD, that's the liberals. Uh, uh, maybe I will not make a um, connection to the Polish because we are here speaking English is the international channel, so maybe people I don't will know what is comparable to the Polish politics. But anyway, the uh, FPD, that's uh, Freie Democrats, that's the liberal party. Um, like, uh, I don't know. Okay, Liberal Party. Yeah. Everybody will know what is Liberal Party. That's the party of the rich old guys who have money and they're always voting for them. Yeah. Uh, they're very pro, pro capitalistic party. Then you have the Greenen. And the Greenen is uh, the Greens. It's hard to say what, what they want. Uh, there's a many uh, now accusations that the Greens are actually the. Uh, sponsored by Mr. Putin. But actually, it's uh, what you say. I, I, I really believe in that because the, the last uh, moves of the Greens are very, always very favorable the Russian government, what you say. is good or bad, but it's the fact. It's it's like that. So uh, this is the party. This is uh, still the Linke, the, uh, the post-communistic party. There is AFD, what is the I would say eurosceptic, anti-immigrant, so on, so on, so on. Kind of fascist, but the light version. And there is NPD, what is the uh, the hardcore version of them, let's say. Something uh, like NSDAP, the Hitler party, but of course, um, working in the uh, frame of um, of German, um, German law. What is uh, saying here in Germany that NPD actually it's not a party, it's uh, the party made by the German Verfassungsschutz. Uh, this is like a um, counterintelligence in Germany. <coughs> Verfassungsschutz means the uh, the office to protect the constitution, something like that. And they are the guys like in, in I don't know like FBI, no even not like a secret service or something like that in uh, in America, mm, and. There is uh, saying people that the NPD was made by them just to attract the, this uh, extremity, the uh, right radicals, and put them to the one party that they can control easy them. So yeah, that also have a songs for me. Uh, so this is the main parties, and uh, there is a smaller leftist party as our common our common friends it was uh, by them and uh, the MLPD, which is the Initial Partei Deutschland, but uh, they never been in Bundestag. It was quite a uh, small party. And other hands, but okay, this is this is the political party, that you work, how it's work, and later I can tell you how it's actually uh, work the ruling in Germany, because it's, it's not like that, that it's everything made in Bundestag in the parliament. The G Germany have a problem with with uh, something different, not not with the politics made uh, by politicians. Yes, but could you compare the uh, situation of the communist ideology in Germany and in Poland? Because the MLPD it is Marxist Leninist party of Germany. Um, uh, and it is le legal party. I was in the office in this party in Gelserkirchen. Gelserkirchen. <laughs> Gelserkirchen. And there is the monument of Lenin in front of this, uh, in this uh, uh, headquarters. And there are many, many posters in this, in this headquarters, in this building, revolutionary posters. Uh, also, uh, uh, now, a few weeks ago, when I, I, I was um, <laughs> traveling uh, to, to France, uh, I, I saw a lot of posters of MLPD, and my brother uh, also make a photo of the posters of DKP, DKP, DKP so ad another communist parties. So how it is possible that the communist in, in Germany is legal and Poland, which is country 
economy, economically, um, I, uh, how to say, controlled by the German corporation, there are so anti-communist hysteria. Uh, no, first of all, communism is legal in Poland. Nobody said it's illegal in the, uh, in the Polish legal acts. They're saying just you cannot, uh, how I said, reflect to the, as they said, I quote, uh, totalitarian uh, totalitarian or whatever uh, ways of this movement yeah? and is the same to the nazism in, in poland the nazis is not illegal but you cannot refer to the totalitarian method of it what with communism and, and, and fascism is a bit different because if you want to be a good fascist or, or uh, nazi then you have to refer only to the mm, totalitarian of it because they are grow from it, and that is the main uh, main ideology of of uh, Nazi and and uh, fascism. Uh, communism, not really. So it's easy to be a communist, I think. But of course, what is staying in the legal acts is different. What is in a, in reality, but. Uh, of course, uh, the current government of Poland is uh, grew up somehow from um, from anti-communist. This, this, this part of the uh, people who was actually many of them was working for the uh, government, uh, the communist government of Poland. But somehow, you know, it's like how you say the biggest homophobic people are this one who are deeply gay. So maybe the most anti-communistic people in Poland who they are, they actually. They are communists in the in the heart, like 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 our government. No? Especially you, you you can see that the the people like for example there is a lot in, in Poland. Yeah, this uh, like you said animal anti communist like uh, Mr. Tsairowski, you know. And if you a little bit look in his biography, but. I don't know, of course, he's a smart guy and no, not smart, but in, in the way that he can organize his life. Um, for sure, in one day he can clean his uh, files. But if you look in his bio, it's more than certain that that guy uh, was working for the uh, for the communist government, for, for the uh, for the security services. Because in in the uh, martial law in Poland, nobody just was uh, granted uh, a travel to Mexico for um, for a leisure. He was granted, so and is the most of the Polish opposition was was working for the government, communist government. And so, of of course, uh, there is some anger in them, and um, Polish myth of the Third Republic is built on the. Um, fight against communism. And somehow, you know, mm, some countries were born without history. Somehow, you have to make the the born myth where they are born from. And the governments of the Third Republic in Poland, they are born from myth. We won with the communists. What is bullshit? A uh, bullshit, of course, because how? Uh, especially ninety percent of them was working for the communists. So like that was just given the government to them and then maybe we were just moved in the shadow and Germany it's not exception from the Western Europe the communists in Western Europe are legal and they are in governments of the countries like France like Italy uh, I don't know if in Spain but there are many countries uh, they are even in government like in Austria where they are governing the city of Graz in the moment so that is nothing special in Western Europe Yes, yes, but I, for example, I was in 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 Trier, Trevier. Uh, yeah, it is yeah. not far, not far from you, and uh, the biggest touristic attraction of this city it is Karl Marx. He's everywhere in this city. So yeah, but the... in every city in Germany, you have a a street of Karl Marx next to me as well is this Karl Marx Allé. Uh, Karl Marx is a great philosopher who make a um, make a foundation for the workers movement the the significant person in the world history so this is a, you know German cell point no? yes 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 I understand this but, but uh... I am interesting about this difference because because in the last two years 
there was a big monument of Marx, uh, which was uh, uh, erected in in Trier in the for the 2000 200th anniversary of this, his birth and uh, but not uh, by germans yes but german accepted it yeah, and the chinese uh, founded it and uh, and, uh, and uh, after they also reached this uh, monument of lenin in gelserkirchen so but they are two two different things first of all yes yes, yes. but from my perspective perspective where germany is the country where they now they are building the monuments of marx and lenin and in poland they try to destroy not the monument of lenin because all these monuments are already destroyed but they they try to uh, destroy all the uh, all the souvenirs of the leftist uh, history of Poland. But wait, that that is in not only Polish things. To be honest, this is a things of Lithuania. This is a things of Hungary. This is a thing of Czech Republic or Slovakia, and so on, so on. This is uh, like. Uh, but if you go more east, uh, they of course they are different. Mm, but in here, in the middle of Europe, uh, as I said, in this um, uh, in this uh, belt, like Poland, Czech, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and so on, maybe because of any different reasons in any country, but the leftist history is treated exactly the same as in Poland. Mm, and maybe Poland and Hungary are the countries who are most uh, fighting. Well, maybe Lithuania as well. Lithuania is also the the kind of this country when the current governments are from this um, communist opposition before and somehow they finding the, the founding meat uh, so and uh, for them it's easy to call everything what they don't like a communism so yeah this is kind of writing the new history and maybe it's not about the anti-communism even this is about uh, forming the new people who will, um, how you said, uh, who will vote for them, who will be the the new generation, who will be kept by them. You understand what I mean? Just uh, shaping the new generation in the way they will like to have, they will like have a, a very obey uh, citizens. So they're building the, all the myth of uh, the communism. On, um, of the partisans of the Second World War and so on and so on. And mostly it's happened in the totalitarian governments of the Eastern Europe, like Poland and Hungary. Um, Slo Slovenia is going uh, the same way. And, uh, another such country is a strong authoritarian uh, government from right side. And yeah, this authoritarian government somehow building the, the founding meat on the anti-communism the and they want to... Uh, yeah, I can make the some kind of enemy they can fight with. Um, they can fight with the Jews, but fighting with the Jews is, let's say, in the word, very unpolitical correct. Uh, they can fight with the fascism, but let's say that is the part of the uh, voters, the fascists. So they're fighting against communism and whatever. The communist is not existing in Poland, uh, or never exists, actually. Uh, but so-called communism, uh, what they call communism, is not existing for 30 years in Poland. Uh, but they still have this enemy who uniting them and they can fight against. And they're fighting everybody what they don't like and who they don't like, they are communists. Like like Jews before Second World War. Okay. I, I would like to ask you about some events which taking place in your region in July. Uh, there was a big flood and uh, many citizens of Germany, I, have, I think that most than 200 died because of this. Uh, how you explain that uh, one of the richest country in the world uh, was uh, so inefficacious in the way of managing of this crisis with this uh, <laughs> with this uh, with this problem that uh, uh, more than 200 people died because of rain uh, okay 
<coughs> my dear friend, we how uh, maybe we can find a bit today uh, <laughs> on antenna uh, because I, I I think you will not like what I will say, but uh, actually in the case of this flooding, the Germany didn't done so bad. Um, the much worse was the the fighting with pandemic, but maybe we'll come back to it, and that make the a lot of Germans uh, very pissed off about the government. They didn't make a change last election, and so much, but is growing really. Uh, you know, how is said And content in the in the society, but about the flooding, it was uh, not not so bad managed. Of course, they can manage it much much better, but. The flooding, the flooding, it's uh, it's not like you think that it's just uh, you know some rain and there's a little bit uh, going up and up and up the level of the river. That was the flash flooding. Uh, means they come the big way from uh, from the mountains. I'm living in such area, also flooded around me. Uh, I'm uh, living in such area that's around the mountains called Eiffel. Mm, what was most uh, Damage, but it's uh, flooding with small rivers, and there was a lot of raining on the uh, on top of the hills, and it really make a wave. What was just going through and taking the bridges, the houses, and so on. And you just wake up in the middle of the um, night, and there is your house is gone. Uh, and that's how it's happened, and how it's the, uh, the people died there. Yeah? Uh, another hand, the Germans. Because the Germans was very social country before, and they organized themselves in uh, in an artistic way, and so on. They are more more close uh, in the way of organization the country to the um, uh, to the I don't know socialistic Poland than to to America. They are much closer. Uh, so here are existing, for example, something uh, called the Hinschev Hilfswerke. Let's say so. In Germany, when the army coming and the helping, that is looking bad. Ne? Uh, in Germany, the army is something what is kept far away from the society because of the historical reasons. Uh, so they create a huge um, organization. They are calling the technical um, technical help organization, something like that. But to translate to the English is very German word. And uh, they founded by the state, and they equipped with everything what is needed for the disaster uh, areas, eh? uh, like the bridges, uh, hospitals, I don't know, generators, and so on, so on. <clears throat> and they really, really, really working efficient. And the next days, next days, um, uh, they organize the help, they, they bring the hospitals, they, they help the people, and so on. And that is, I have to say that. They're acting very, very good. What happened after, that is another uh, story, because uh, the time they need, for example, the railway next to me, or just bringing me to the biggest city around Aachen, it's still not working after the flooding. Uh, the motorway A61, it's still not repaired, it's still closed. And there's a lot of such places where it's still closed, still uh, not repaired. And that is because, of course, the uh, there's not state repairing. They have to um, hire some outside company, some private company, make a bid, corruption, so on, so on. Which is the biggest problem. The cure in Germany is is, is, is this uh, cooperation with the private companies and a lot of corruption. What we can see in the uh, burning in Brandenburg airport, what was a terrible disaster of the not German engineering, but the corruption, corruption of the government and the uh, private companies. The second is the Stuttgart 21, uh, the big rebuild or uh, of the uh, Stuttgart uh, uh, city transport disaster, uh, big delays, uh, budget cross by many hundred percent, and so on, so on. And that that is the problem, which is uh, now uh, driven by Germany. But the reaction for the flooding was not so bad as can be in the other places of uh, of Europe. Hopefully, I am didn't say anything wrong. Yes, but I think that your explanation was a little bullshit. That this uh, you said that there is a mountain. I think that this mountain it is not surprise. It is not mountain which was created yesterday. Uh, it was something that. Uh, it exists from thousands of years or million of years 
and normally if you have people who lived in this area the social the the, the state uh, the socialist state uh, uh, can prevent uh, all the people uh, i am not agree that 200 people who died because of rain uh, it is it is a success of the managing uh, I can compare this. Uh, I I I saw I I was uh, in this uh, uh, German uh, Western German. I I see all these uh, small individual uh, private buildings, and I can compare this with the with the architecture of the Eastern Germany, uh, where is the collective people living in block and in this rain in in Eastern. Germany, nobody died. Uh, so uh, well, it is again, it is it is very famous to to, to make the comparison: uh, Western uh, West against East, uh, South Korea against North Korea. So when we somebody wants to compare the uh, the capitalist Germany with Eastern Germany, uh, thirty years after the Counter Revolution, all the time in the architecture we see the. Uh, the advantages of the socialism and uh, when it's raining people in eastern germany uh, they can they can sleep w without any any, uh, any uh, so i refer you to the floodings what happened in saxony i don't remember what was the year but uh, it was as well very disaster flooding the same as here happened many people die in saxony is the eastern germany and the mountain side uh, here, I disagree with you because uh, as I'm an architect and urbanist, uh, especially, um, the urbanization in the Western Germany is uh, by history different than the Eastern Germany. Eastern Germany can collective this, this blocks. It's not Western Germany don't have the, um, the neighborhood with the high rise blocks. Of course they have. They have a building in, uh, because the high rise block, it's not developed by the socialistic country. It's the way of, um, of Le Corbusier or Bauhaus, that is 20s. And it was built not only in Eastern Europe, it was Eastern Europe it very helped to rebuild the country after the war, but also was built in here, in, in London. For example, if you remember the big disaster fire, what's, uh, what's happened because of the lack of maintenance of this building, but that is the high-rise building in, in London. They are built in Britain, they are built in America. They are built everywhere around the world. Um, Western Germany is individual houses and so on. Western Germany don't have big cities. Generally, Germany don't have big cities. There are 80 million, 84 million people living here, but they are uh, combined in the small, um, um, small, small villages, small towns, historic reasons, because Germany existing as a one country from 200 years, no more. Before, they were divided by the very, very, very small communes, uh, small um, princes, small so on, so on, kingdoms. That is the historic reasons. So then the, the urbanization of East in West Germany, you know, uh, I, I know it's easy to compare, but this is this is a trap as uh, we as leftist people, we are very easy catch by um, uh, by the right side when they said, oh, guys, and the Eastern Germany didn't have something like a BMW and so on. We are easily catch by this trap. But you cannot compare in Eastern Germany with the Western Germany because these countries have completely uh, different contexts. The, the Western Germany, they had all the industry, what is left from before, from 100 years of the development. And this is easy in Poland as well. You don't have everywhere uh, industry. Industry is in Silesia, where was the minerals and so on. And in uh, one day when you take, uh, I don't know, you take the, the Podlasia, that is Eastern Poland, mostly agriculture, and a quite uh, poor country, and you cut it off from any market and say, now you're building a country here, and after 10 years you said, ha, 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 Podlasia is poorer than the rest because they have wrong system. No, because you cannot compare this to this. Uh, Eastern Germany was just a country created on the such industrial uh, desert. Not completely, but yes, and they make a huge progress in these years, like the Soviet Union, they make a huge progress from the uh, Tsarship Russia to the times of um, of Soviet Union when they sending the, the men to the space. There was a huge, a huge jump. 
but you cannot compare in the USA when they, uh, without wars, uh, exploiting uh, people, stealing, <laughs> stealing the land and so on, doing this, all the things, um, and colonize the half of the world, they become super rich. And they said they because of the capital. It's not because of the capital. It's because of the geography, history, and so on. They become not because of the system. And that way you cannot compare these this two things despite of the of the history and geography and so on because that is the trap what we left is an easy easy catch when they said ah america so successful because of the system bullshit this is because of the completely different reasons yes but uh, i remember that uh, maybe in 2018 or 2017 I was um, traveling in Germany and uh, I take uh, my, my, my wife reserved two, uh, two hotels. One hotel was in Trier in the city of Karl Marx and uh, it was the cheapest one hotel in this city and it cost 70 euros. 70 and I remember that the bathroom there was very ugly. Uh, after we we had a, a room in Dresden for 50 euros and this room wa was much better the ba bathroom was much better than in this trier so uh, we have something which is cheaper and better how you explain this and it's very easy and i want to uh, come back later if there's a chance you know a discussion uh, about uh, why Germany have a big problem now and uh, why, why, why I think they're becoming un very unsuccessful. Uh, the difference between East and West and now in Poland when I was traveling. For example, if you travel Polish motorways, they are much nicer than the Western Germany motorways. They are wider, they are, um, uh, they are without the holes. The restaurant on the motorways are cleaner, nicer. The toilets are always clean, new, nice, and so on. Comparing to the Western Germany, it's it's really much better. The Polish motorways, the same in the Eastern Germany. The motorways are nicer. Uh, also, toilets are cleaner in the Eastern Germany. The hotels are nicer, uh, filling stations are nicer, and so on. Uh, the explanation is very easy. They are new. The old infrastructure was built here in the West in. in 50s, 60s, 70s, so on. And they stopped to maintain it. Yeah. They are just very old infrastructure built. In uh, in Eastern Germany, when they rebuilt the old motorways, in, uh, it was paying till last year, I think they, they removed it, but before I was paying uh, every month like a 16, 17 euro uh, so-called solidarity tax that every German in the Western Germany who living, they have to pay the solidarity tax. That was the tax to rebuilding the Eastern Germany, it means rebuild the only infrastructure, infrastructure, building new roads, motorways, and so on, so on, to connect these two uh, countries in, into one. Because, of course, these both countries was developing their own infrastructure and it was not connected so to connect it's everything and make more equal they make this found and they was rebuilding the same in poland we have no motorways from long long time uh when we build it they are new and that is quite easy explanation why in eastern germany the things are new because they are just new build the same as in poland actually that is not the thing uh, related to uh, to the history. This is just like this. And the Western Germany, of course, now I have a huge problem with the infrastructure. Uh, the motorways are narrow, full of holes, uh, and filling stations are old, others are old, everything needs to be rebuilt, uh, maintained, because uh, the government of... Uh, it started, I think, from Mr. Schröder, when they start to... Um, going into the way of there was the time of, of Tony Blair né, as well in um, in Great Britain when the uh, the so-called leftists in uh, uh, Western Europe and they going this liberal way of the I don't know Thatcher and Reagan they learn from them and they try to be more capitalistic than um, than the right side and they stop to investing in anything stop to maintenance because they said that yeah infrastructure uh, is belong to the, uh, the state so everything what the state is wrong we're not investing uh, for example they kill uh, the German railway like that 
Um, because uh, everybody who recently traveled the German railway can say that they are most unpunctual uh, railways in the world. And this is true. Each time I try to travel here, I'm not tra uh, travel so often with the railways in Germany, but each time I, I travel with the Deutsche Bahn, uh, they are late always. The train no come or come too late or is never punctual. And that is well known thing here. And why it's happened? Because in the time, I think on Schroeder and later uh, of Merkel, and they was preparing to, uh, uh, they was preparing to sell it, uh, to priv uh, privatize and find some investor. Mm, and to do it, they, they try to raise the, the value of this to selling everything what is not uh, bringing the uh, revenue. And many of this was some spare tracks, spare, uh, uh, spare uh, uh, railway engines and so on, so on. So the things what was keep to keep this infrastructure in good shape, they sold it everything. They they change the mind. They keep it state. Uh, by it's missing when it's one engine is broken. There's no spare one because they they remove it this anymore. So yeah, that was that was the way how they want to privatize. So they change the mind and now it's a shit the German railway. There is one comrade here which are watching our conversation. His name is uh, Venceremos Allende, but he he is German, and he uh, said to you, "Boże, well, go from forced Saxony to Opole in Poland. This is just concrete place for f f 15 kilometers. So true, you are always late." Uh, you can there are they shut down more than three thousand kilometer of rail after nineteen ninety four and he write a lot of comments to our conversation so what do you think about the the conflict now with have Poland with European Union and what do you think about the position of Germany in European Union? do you think that this reform of European Union, it is something like realization of big German plan to, to be a power in Europe, the, that it is uniting uh, uh, because the, the uh, Polish far right accused the Germans that they, that European Union, it is the tool of the German power in Europe. You are agree with this or not? Uh, conflict with European Union. Yeah, the European Union. It's um, uh, it's such organization. Of course, they will be ruled by the uh, strongest power, and uh, they always will be Germany. Um, mostly, and uh, now economically, it's, it's the biggest country. Uh, there is one. I don't remember who said so, but uh, they said that the Germany it's uh, too small to rule the world, but it's uh, too big to rule Europe. Or there is too big to be in Europe, or too small to be a world superpower. And it's, it's kind of this, uh, yeah, uh, conflict inter by the German capitalists. That's that's true. And this is the subject. What I want to say that the Germany politics, the Germany, it's rule um, some gray forces, let's say so. Uh, that is the old uh, aristocracy, the old capitalists, like a big, uh, big industrial families uh, who owning most of the wealth in Germany. Uh, they coming from the old German nobles. They was not destroyed by the Hitler. Uh, they was not destroyed by the uh, Bundesrepublik. Now they just existing. Uh, and they ruling in Germany, and I don't remember which newspaper I was reading when some time ago I was reading uh, the very good article uh, about that. Uh, uh, how the Germany is ruled by this, this by these old families, and there was a big affair. I don't remember what was here, but it was really shown um, how the, all the politics is uh, penetrated by just by just these families, and this politician, what you can see in TV and so on, um, they are like a puppet just of this uh, big uh, German families, 
And all politics in, in Europe, uh, it's tried to make in the favor of this big German families. And of course, maybe in the club, there are so industrial families from France and so on, but the most of them are from Germany. So any conflicts will be made by them. So if you want to know something about politics in Germany, you have to start to thinking like this, this big, uh, big noble families from the past. But I think it's everywhere, but not in the Eastern Europe when the aristocracy was uh, one day whip out, not completely, but mostly, but here in the West, unfortunately, uh, maybe in the French Revolution as well, many of them was whipped out, but here the German old aristocracy, it's in very good shape and they rule in Germany. Maybe I make too much digression. Yes, yes, but you don't answer. Uh, I, I am interesting about the. Uh, do you watch? Do you watch uh, the German media? If they talked about Poland, uh, what do they? What they talk about Poland today? No, the, the, unfortunately, I have to say that uh, yes, I have TV in the home. Uh, but I'm not watching the TV stations and but it's not uh, not because I'm of Germany I don't like German TV no I'm not watching TV since I don't know 2000 I just don't like it I, I just try to but uh, what are the Germans thinking about the Poland I don't I don't know my most of Germans what they think about the Poland I know what uh, thinking the engineers what I work with uh, there is a lot of uh, the stereotypes what is still existing, but uh, uh, how is it? Ah, the one thing, of course, what they uh, what they think about the Poland is everybody um, thinking that now in Poland is a kind of uh, you know I don't know Chile Chile of the time of Pinochet, no? that is kind of uh, very totalitarian government. That is common narration. Um, other ways they said oh. In Poland, this is a very racist place. The Poland is very, you know, I don't know, homophobic. You don't like uh, blah 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 foreigners and so on. That that is in the, um, I don't know, most of the people who I work with. That's the view on Poland. But the other hand, the, they're making a lot of business with Poland, and uh, how you say the, they already start to see Poland as a. Um, a successful country what is doing a lot of business good and you can make money with it so they start to thinking about the Poland as a um, partner to make a business but other hand it's still somewhere deep in them that is we are the you know the East well East in Germany means something you know how you said poorer um, poorer part of family and just you always have to teach them what to do yeah, the Germans feel like uh, they have to teach the Poland democracy, they have to uh, teach them uh, human rights, they have to teach them uh, how to use the computer, for example, because uh, they're thinking that, you know, we are a bit backwards, what is completely bullshit, because in the case of the new technologies, the Germany is much backward than Poland. But they're still thinking that they are much advanced than Poland. And yeah, I don't know if it's this answer for your question, but that that is how the Poland in, in my area seen. Okay, I think that we can finish the German subject. Uh, and the last thing which I want to ask you, how you... Uh, no, how but before you... maybe yeah? we finish the German subject. Yes. My observation about the Germany, uh, last year, especially after Corona, uh, when the German state really failed uh, and the German society become very close now to each other. Mm, Germany somewhere started sleeping, somewhere in the 90s. They started thinking they are the best in Europe, most advanced uh, and so on, so on. And they start to sleep. In sleep, uh, they stopped advancing. Yeah? is up to improving the country and i will say that the eastern europe is really escaping from them easy and they they somewhere didn't catch it the the infrastructure here in the case of the new technologies in it and so on it's really shit there's shitty internet there's shitty banking there's shit you cannot do anything by internet in the uh 
in um, in government. No? They're still using a fax in the government, still using a bureaucracy with the paper stamps and so on, so on. They are really backward in a lot, a lot of things, and the many people around uh, what see it. Only not the Germans. Germans still thinking that we are superior than others. Uh, and if they don't wake up from this, this sleeping, the world will really go far away and they will stay here where they are thinking that they are the best. That's it. I think that uh, the same things you, you can say about France that uh, all the time <laughs> all the time but it is not that they are thinking about 1990s they are thinking about the time when the uh, France was the big uh, colonial imperium and every every people in Europe have to speak French language uh, and Germans thinking that everybody who is in Germany have to speak German no? mm -hmm. uh, but but I will say that is I think the most of the Our Western countries, uh, this, this big Western countries like Britain, France, Germany, uh, Italy, maybe less, but but still they somewhere still thinking that they are superior than the rest of the world. But uh, it's changing, but they didn't see it. It's changing, and they somehow sleeping in this, you know, in the way uh, in the dream of be the superpower, but it's changing, but they don't see it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will read the comment of uh, Comrade Venceremos Allende. We have even worse internet than Albania. Very true what you say. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. Here, internet is, is really shit when I'm crossing Polish border. Finally, I get great internet and connection. There and is a so question for you. Who is going to be the next chancellor in Germany? Um, I think the biggest chance that the Schultz have, no? but uh, I don't know what's happened, but for sure not Laschet. Laschet is already resigned from everything. So I think there's only only one uh, thing is, uh, is the Schultz. Okay, so because it's, it's late, uh, I would like to finish, but I want to know your opinion, what to do to 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 change something in your native country in our native country in Poland what to do to make uh, the polish radical left anti capitalist movement communist movement stronger uh, stronger uh, existing because it's uh, today the difficulties to say that there is something which exists all these things are very very small very very weak there are not many political leftist activity do you have idea what how to change you know the biggest change have to be maybe in um ourself because if you see um uh, for example in some leftist movement just get some power and Uh, get to the parliament or get some funding and become more popular. They're becoming conformistic and finish. They get, uh, how we said, I don't know even how in English uh, say that, uh, you know, corito. When they get to the money, uh, when they get to the power, they they start to play like the rest. And uh, that, that is the point to not do it. You know how over. Uh, the guy from the left when they get to parliament, what they start to do, who they become. Uh, in three, maybe, you know, it's, it's hard change because mostly the holistic people, uh, they never get to power. Uh, maybe that's the secures of the, of the idealistic people. Uh, maybe we should make more real politic. And this is what is in Poland very not popular, uh, something what in Germany it's always been always popular during the history, so-called uh, real, real politic, yeah? Means uh, not losing our values, not losing our, um, our demands, uh, just some, sometimes, you know, got, uh, how is that, go with the, mainstream to get to the power but not lose ourselves because uh, sometimes the people use this real politics but they lose themselves and uh, 
yeah, I would say everybody who knows the, the Polish political sense know that uh, the most idealistic people, when they smell a bit of uh, power and money, they immediately start to playing like the old players. So, yeah, this is very hard. But one, one thing what we have to always do is uh, educate people. That's very important. Uh, and not go to this uh, all uh, ideological, who is it? Mm, maybe you will know the English uh, English word for it, uh, not budowa ideologiczna. The nadstrojka po ruski. Mm. Uh, uh, the, uh... You know, all, all these things, what is uh, about fighting for the uh, gay rights, women rights, uh, minorities rights, and so on, so on, so on. This is and this is the thing when the millions of people start to fighting each other, we never get uh, mm, uh, get one front. A superstructure. Yeah, superstructure. We have to fight for the uh, the basics of the whole movement was built. So it means for the uh, well life of the workers, for our uh, well being. That's it. And mm-hmm. if the well being of our our well-being will be uh, granted. They will be granted to the gays, to the blacks, to the women, to everybody. First of all, is to build the well-being of the of the working class, and that should be our target. And so long as uh, the main target will be this, uh, as um, Comrade Tomasho said, ideological agenda will be in the front of the basics of the workers' movement. Then we don't build nothing. Okay, it's so uh, it is a question for both of you. How can we improve the relation and exchange between Polish and German comrades? Do you have idea or this is question for me? Uh, first, first of all, we have to understand that the uh, workers' movement was international movement all the time. and. Um, how it's uh, called the end of the uh, manifesto? The workers of all countries united. Yeah. The Mar- Marxist perspective is the class perspective, not the nationalistic perspective. I think what's uh, for us is common is our class perspective. When we belong to the one class, there is not important to which nation we belong, which language we speak. We have a common interest as a one class. And to better cooperate, we have to first understand that our class interest is the, our main interest. Our, our targets are the class targets, not the cl- uh, targets of the um, uh, nations and so on. Nations are uh, invent- invented in the 18th century just to build a cheap armies. That's it. We don't have a common interest as a nations. There is no common interest of the Polish. There is no my interest and Mr. Kulczyk interest together. We, we we don't have common targets. We never will have. But I have a common target with you, Mr. Pierre, who working in the factory, and Hans, who is uh, working with me in the office. We have a common uh, common targets, but I don't have targets with Mr. Merkel or Mr. Kulczyk or Mr. Gates. We'll never have. So I think the first thing we have to always remember about a uh, class perspective. Yes, but uh, do you think <coughs> what is the position of the German workers towards the Polish um, temporary workers who came, uh, who work a few weeks, few months, and they come back? And because of uh, the thousands of Poles who tr- work like this, the the salaries in the eastern germany are smaller than in western germany do you think that it is one of the reason of the popularity of the extreme right parties uh, and if yes how changed it how changed that because uh, it's very stupid situation when the workers from one country vote not to the communist party but vote to the anti-immigrant parties and they see that for them the biggest threat it's not the 
uh, it's not the German bourgeoisie, but the migrant workers from countries like Poland, Romania, or countries like Afghanistan, Iraq. Yeah, of course, there will, there will be always a big problem on the leftist uh, movement. Uh, and that is a very uh, big problem, for example, in, in, in Poland, in Germany less, but in Poland it's a problem that the left have uh, bringing some, because, you know, if you are poor without the perspective and you are uh, fucked up uh, with the uh, transition period, uh, transition to the capitalists, then you try to find the, the reason. And the left saying, okay, the reason is the capitalists and so on and so on, but in other hands, bringing you, uh, you have to love LGBT, you have to love uh, this, you have to love this, blah, 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 yeah. uh, women rights and so on. Of course, this everything is a part of the uh, left side, but putting it on the front, it's making that these guys, who are usually the, you know, the workers and so on, in Poland and in East Germany and so on, the they, they guys, uh, they are very conservative. The church have influence, the history have influence, but a lot of people are very conservative. If we know from history, the uh, even the Soviet Union was very conservative. Uh, ideolo uh, probably not ideologically, but uh, I lost the word. But you know what I mean. In the uh, in case of, of, of views, they were very conservative. And the right side coming and they're giving very easy answers. The enemy is the guys who take your work. Uh, they came from outside. The enemies are this all who bringing you this uh, against your uh, point of view, you know, this all LGBT and so on, so on. They're taking your work, blah, 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 and uh, giving you an easy answer, but in the frame of your viewing of the world, you know, this very conservative one. And uh, People are very hard to change, and the many of, of old guys who are supporting the, the communistic party in Poland before in the, in the communistic Poland, now they are voting for for peace for this uh, right wing party because of the ideological. They also the, this old Polish communists. They are very conservative, and. Yeah, the, there's very very hard way for the for the left side to one hand somehow hide the this uh, some kind of ideology progressive one uh, and they show the, the real enemy what is the bourgeoisie. Mm, yeah, to not making too fast, uh, not forcing the people too fast change of the conservative mind, and this is very hard thing. But uh, it's not the answer for now. Of course, we have to rethink it, but uh, it's the way how we have to be work. Uh, because really, uh, bringing this whole agenda of this um, <clears throat> uh, of this refusal of of, of church of uh, of the conservative way of life, uh, bringing the equality and so on, it will not work to the working class in the countries where they are very conservative. It's very hard to change people in that way. They will vote for the uh, left side when the left side will not force them to the very uh, change the conservative thinking. I don't know if uh, everybody understands what I'm meaning. Uh, I think that the Pedro Castillo understands what do you what you, are you talking about, and all the leftist candidates in the um, Latin America the Bolivian party movement for the socialism or the Venezuela example also the party of the Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro uh, all this example of the leftist uh, people leftist organization who represent the uh, poor people uh, take power only when they forget this uh, this superstructure stuff that fighting for a uh, I don't know uh, changing the the language that now the language have to be more feminist uh, or stuff. It's if you try to combine this with leftist politics with the class struggle. 
uh, in every Western country in USA and in all Europe countries. Uh, try to combine this. It's finished all, all, always uh, with the catastrophe, uh, and uh, and that's all. Yeah, that, that's all. And we have to understand that. And we have much bigger problem to solve than uh, uh, than uh, gender neutral language. Really, in Poland we have um, much more uh, things to to repair. And even here in Germany, for example. Uh, I don't know you, about the floods. You said that the biggest discussion in the uh, in the last election in Germany, but uh, held uh, two weeks a few weeks ago, um, there was a discussion about the climate change, and yeah, we have a really problem here with unemployment, with low wages, with inflation, um, and so on, so on, so on, and the problem of the. Climate change, of course, is is uh, now after the flooding, especially go on because this flooding was a result of the changing climate, and really you can see it in here. As I say, living here in Germany, in one of most rain places in uh, in Europe, and last three years there was no a drop of rain in the summer, and you can see the change of the climate. Of course, that is a problem, but the problem, for example, is to build less uh, because uh, 30 percent of the emission of CO2 is a, a cement industry. But nobody saying about uh, let's produce less concrete, less concrete, but everybody said let's produce more toxic waste in the batteries. And um, another way is the, the green saying uh, to an all of the all atomic energy in uh, in um, in Germany, what is totally bullshit, and all the parties have here consent um, to to shut down the, the atomic energy, and, and somehow you know this is, I think, the way of Mr. Putin. I think because um, you know what is happening with the prices of the gas, and the Germans want to replace the the energy uh, atom energy with the um, gas energy. The gas coming uh, mostly 90%, I think, here uh, from Russia. And these guys who are very opting for that, they are Greens. And without the Greens, you don't build any coalition to govern Germany. And that's it. That's what I think. Uh, because atomic energy is only one um, solution now for the world, for the stable uh, stable source of energy and uh, don't producing the, the gases. So. Yeah, that that is the thing that we have to solve here, and uh, yeah, and this this all ideological things are really uh, are really push it to the left side by this uh, very very rich people, the bourgeoisie and so on. They putting to over movement this all the LGBT, the this all uh, genders and so on, the odd things because they know it when we start to using, and we lost. And I think that's the work of the. This is kind of, you know, uh, more work, you know, movement. Okay, comrade Boise, I am impressed of your <coughs> of your level of English. Uh, I think that uh, you speak better English than German. Uh, and that's, that's for sure because I'm in work. I'm using English and in my family because my <laughs> wife coming from communist China in <laughs> that way. So, so I hope that uh, we will uh, we will continue our conversation because uh, it's not easy to find leftists who speak uh, uh, clever things and uh, in in good uh, good English language. Most of my no, 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 my English is so. No, my, 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 I'm sorry for this mm. accent, but really, I'm, I'm catching mm. the Chinese accent, I'm catching the German accent, I'm catching, I still have a Polish mm. accent, so I have no chance to get something which is more native. But okay, hopefully, will, everybody forgive me. I will finish the broadcasting, but we will stay. Mm. It's yeah. wait, wait, uh, and I.